What's up, YouTube? This is Galactic God, and welcome to the episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Chat. Now, first off, let me give a big happy Father's Day welcome to anyone out there watching who is a father. I myself am one as well. Uh, so this day actually means quite a bit to me as it does to my son to be able to spend time with uh, your loved ones and whatnot. Secondly, let me go ahead and give a couple of quick shout-outs. The first one going out to Simply YGO. The second one going out to X Murder Sky X. The third one going out to Mr. Mostly Dope. And of course, the fourth one going out to Steel Comics. I shall have links to these guys all around in annotations on the screen, as well as in the description bar below. If you could, please go check out their channels. Rate, like, comment, subscribe to their stuff. I'm sure any kind of help and feedback you could give them would be very much appreciated. Um, with that kind of said and out of the way, I'd kind of like to talk about this week's discussion. And what that is going to be on is a time in, uh, in my life, I guess, when I came close to quitting Yu-Gi-Oh! And so basically I'm going to set the stage on kind of what happened here. It was right after I started first becoming real competitive into the game. Uh, me and my friends have been playing for probably a little while. And I guess we were ready to move to that next level. We had started going to locals all the time. And we were getting ready to go to our first regional. And, you know, we were spending more money on Yu-Gi-Oh! We were getting the, the really hard to get staple cards. Now you got to remember when I first started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! A lot of the staple cards that are released now and are really easy to get, MSTs, Dark Holes, uh, Heavy Storms, all that kind of stuff, they were not really available in common form. You had to actually go out and buy the holographic version. So if I wanted a Torrential Tribute, for example, I couldn't just go pick up the local structure deck and get one because it wasn't available in there. I actually had to either go buy the cards from that set or go down to either you know eBay or a place like Frankenson's and actually pick up the card for like you know, $10, $15 for a Torrential Tribute. Now, you know, the same thing holds true with a lot of the, the staple cards that were out then. Regeki, Dark Hole, all those kind of cards were, you know, definitely needed in your deck. And if you wanted to be competitive in any sense, you had to have the staple cards. And so I had just, you know, kind of put my staple card deck together. I had finally put together, you know, everything that you would need to have a competitive deck. I had been, you know, testing with it with my buddies for weeks. I've been going to locals. And I attended locals. Um, this one time and you know the tournament was over and I was talking to my friends and you know I had my deck sitting in front of me and I guess I turned away for like a second and I turned back and my deck was gone and it was kind of my first real time experiencing you know a big loss when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! my first real time experiencing you know thievery in Yu-Gi-Oh! I never really thought that something like that would happen um, you know, I was still kind of naive because I was still relatively new to the game. Well, not really new, but new to the competitive nature and, you know, needing to keep an eye on your, your stuff all the time. And that deck was, you know, you know, quite a bit of money in there. And, you know, when you're young and when you're first starting out being competitive, the loss like that is really detrimental to you. And when I went home that day, you know, I was real upset. and I was just like, you know what, forget this game. You know, I don't want to play this game no more. Freaking, this kind of shit's gonna happen. And it just wasn't, you know, wasn't the kind of environment I wanted to be around. And I it just became real disgruntled with the game. And a lot of my friends were like, "No, don't, don't be like that. We're gonna help you rebuild your deck and this and that." And I was like, "I don't know. It just seems so impossible. It's like such a a long, hard road to travel to get that kind of stuff back. Because when you first start out, you don't really have." you know, a big variety of cards. You don't have a huge trade binder to try and trade and get that stuff back. But what my buddies had done was, you know, they each pitched in whatever extra staple cards they had. Oh, this guy had like, you know, an extra MST or an extra Torrential. And this person had, you know, Witch and Sangan and an extra Regeki and an extra Dark Hole and all these extra Snatch Steel and Painful and, you know, Sinister Serpent and all these kind of cards that were real prevalent at the time. I kind of got almost a whole deck, almost a whole competitive deck together. Just from their extras that they were keeping for trades or whatever, and they had just given them to me, to where I would only have to invest not really a minimal amount, but not a huge amount to replace my whole deck. And it was something that, you know, was kind of real touching to me, and I, you know, really thanked my friends for doing that and kind of convincing me to stay in the game. But it was kind of a, a time to where I thought, you know, forget you, Yugi, you know, why do I need this game? And, you know, if it wasn't for my friends, kind of, you know, pushing me to stay in and, you know, helping me out right then at that time, I probably would not have stayed with Yugi and I probably would not be making this video today. So, 
in the comment section below. Let me know if there's ever been a time where you considered quitting Yu-Gi-Oh! What convinced you to change your mind and stay with the game? What convinced you to, to not give up on Yu-Gi and not give up on this game? And I guess that's it for this week. This is Galactic God. Out.